Good evening. Uh, my name is Dr. Mark Davey, and I'm the District Superintendent of Champlain Valley Educational Services. It is our privilege to welcome everyone here this evening to participate in uh, the first of our reopening public forums for our parents and guardians, students, staff, and community members of our CV Tech Division of CVES BOCES. I'd like to start off this evening with an introduction of our CVES administrators and staff who are going to be leading this evening's presentation. First, and I'll ask our team members to just give a wave when your name comes up. Okay, thank you. Uh, first, we have Ms. Harry Calabrese Gray, uh, our Assistant Superintendent of Instruction in 21st Century Learning. Next, we have Mrs. Michelle Friedman, our Director of CV Tech and Career and Technical Education for CV Tech BOCES. Next, we have our principal of our, of our CV Tech Plattsburgh main campus, Mr. Adam Facto. We have our principal of our CV Tech Plattsburgh satellite campus, Mr. Jim McCartney. And principal of our Yandon Dillon campus who oversees both CV Tech and special education students at our Mineville campus, Dr. Grace Steck. I believe also on the call, uh, we have our CVES Adult Literacy Employment Preparation Supervisor and Administrator overseeing our One WorkSource campus, Ms. Kathy Snow. We have Mr. Jeff Sisson, our CVES Health Safety and Risk Specialist, who oversees and coordinates all of our safety planning and training with all of our schools, not only CVES BOCES. And we have several administrative interns, uh, an administrative intern in CV Tech teacher, Mr. Mark Brown, and an administrative intern and CV Tech teacher, Ms. Jessica mitchell Brielle. And we'd like to welcome, on behalf of our administrative team and staff, everyone to the first of our public forums this evening. So it's our privilege to be presenting this tonight. The purpose of tonight's presentation is to provide information about the reopening of CVS BOCES, specifically, our CV Tech programs. CVES is pleased that Governor Cuomo has indicated that the schools in New York State may reopen. We do understand that the first priority of reopening schools for all of our students, parents, families, and staff, as well as our communities, is to put health and safety of our students and staff as the primary objective. We also understand that these have been very trying times as our entire school community, our state and our nation and the world have been working diligently in response to this worldwide pandemic. We are very fortunate to live in the North Country and we're all very proud that we live in the North Country and understand what a beautiful region it is and how lucky we are. But we're also very fortunate that our North Country regional data indicates very favorably that our infection rate and spread has remained low. We acknowledge that the governor's indicators are driven by data and will require that the close monitoring of our data and infection rate will have a significant impact on whether or not schools remain open. Next, we want to thank all of the work and all of the participants who have been active and supportive in the development of our reopening plan for CVES. We had a very comprehensive reopening planning committee that was made up of stakeholders, staff, administrators, nurses uh, from across CVES, as well as our board members. The leadership and work of this group and task force, and then followed up by extensive conversation in each of our divisions, has allowed CVES to put together an extensive reopening plan that we're proud of but we also believe help will help us guide our practices and guided by research to provide a safe learning environment for all of our students. Further, we want to acknowledge that we have submitted our plan to the New York State Department of Education and the New York State Department of Health. We have worked closely with our local health departments in both Clinton and Essex County and the directors of public health as well as their staff 
have been outstanding to work with. We also want to acknowledge that for many months, this work has occurred, as well as the close collaboration of our administrative team and our staff and our 16 component districts who have been very supportive and worked very closely with CVES BOCES to face this pandemic and work together to, to collaborate and also implement research and best practices to keep all of our students throughout the North Country safe and, uh, and moving forward in the best possible way. Next, we would like to acknowledge that our reopening plan is based on the best state guidance available from the New York State Education Department, from the New York State Department of Health. We have utilized extensive research from the CDC and various other health organizations and best practices from across the state and nation to support our reopening plan and guide our decisions to ensure the safest learning environment for all students and staff. I would also like to acknowledge that this this evening is the first of three public presentations to support CVS BOCES reopening of our campuses. We value and acknowledge that the support of our parents and our guardians and our staff and school community are of utmost priority and that we are all working together as partners to ensure the safety of all of our students and your children so that we can provide an outstanding education as we believe we have continued to do for over 70 years. We are committed to continuing to do that and to support our entire school community and all of our students, staff and, and parents, guardians in a successful manner. We look forward to sharing this evening's presentation and answering any questions that you may have. I would like next to just acknowledge, and I'm going to point that we do have a chat function on our WebEx this evening, and please feel free to add questions there, and there may be information that's provided to our attendees uh, who can gather information and also ask questions in that environment as well. We will do our best to answer all the questions this evening and provi provide a thorough and comprehensive overview. I look forward to sharing this information, and we thank you for being an important part of our school community, and we thank you for being here this evening in support of your children and our CV Tech Division and CVES BOCES as a whole. I'm going to now turn it over and hand it off to Ms. Terry Calabrese Gray, our Assistant Superintendent of Instructional 21st Century Learning. Thank you, Dr. Davey. I do wanna say good evening to everyone for taking time to um, join us and help us in this um, challenging times and this task, but we are so excited that you're here and wanna learn more about how we plan to reopen because this is very exciting to have students and get them back in our classrooms. Um, I do see a message that someone asked privately about, um, should a new vision student be attending this? They got it from their counselor. And I would say yes, because Mrs. Friedman and her team are going to speak about new visions, which is a component of the CV Tech division. So I would encourage you to stay on and listen. And as Dr. Davey said, please feel free to use the chat. And there's also a Q and A function where you can submit questions. We do have questions that we've already received ahead of time. So we will be answering those as we go throughout. We're going to do it around various topics. So as we come on a topic, then we have the questions we received to date, and then we will answer or try to answer any other questions you may have. So the first part of our plan is all about communication. So we just encourage you as much as possible to visit our webpage, Definitely utilize social media. I think that's the best way that pe that information gets out, especially CV Tech has a very active Facebook page. So we encourage you to go there to get recent up-to-date notices, but also know that we use email, we use robocalls, we do phone, and we also do the good old USPS mail. So that's some things to keep in mind. And also just make sure as parents and as students, we have your most recent contact information because with that information, we can make sure you get all the timely items that are coming out of the CV Tech division. And just to also as a communication piece in our plan, just so you know, we have started training some of our 12 month staff. We have trained all our 12 month staff actually, and we will be training all of our 10 month staff and students on how to follow the new COVID-19 protocols that we have in place that are outlined in our plan. 
And the question we received about the reopening plan is, will it be posted? And yes, it's already posted on our website where you can access it. And I put it in the chat and I put in the link and it looks like the hyperlink showed up. So that's great. So check out the hyperlink, just click on that. You can get either the sections of the plan or you can get the entire plan. So it's up to you what you prefer. So that's my piece on communication. So I'm gonna hand it off to Mrs. Friedman for CB Tech and her team. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight. I'm Michelle Friedman. I am the extraordinarily proud director of CB Tech, and I am so grateful to have an opportunity to speak with all of you tonight about the reopening of our campuses for our CB Tech students. We've been waiting since March to have this conversation with you. Uh, granted, it's been exhausting, but the, the bottom line is we are so excited to have our students back on our campuses. However, that is not a task or, or a privilege that we take lightly. And so as our core values explicitly state, the very first one on the list, students are our first priority. And our students are coming first and foremost in all of the construction of these preliminary plans. And as the world is rapidly changing and the information is changing, so will our plans to consistently align with that student is our first priority goal and mission. I would also like to add that in addition to students are our first priority, as is our CV Tech teaching faculty and staff and all of our members of team CV Tech. So when we develop the plans, and I have to kind of say in a very compressed timeline, um, we put our best framework framework forward and unlike each of our component districts we had to take into consideration the recommendations the suggestions and the needs of 16 districts spread in clinton and essex county to put together the best plan possible so that we could have kids back on cv tech campuses so tonight i'm very pleased to explain to you a little bit deeper about the CV Tech section in the our continuity of learning plan, which um, Assistant Superintendent Gray referenced that is in the chat. Um, what you see is the framework. What we will do, and we will certainly do with you one on one. We could we could even, if you're a parent and you have questions specific to your child, we can arrange for a meeting just like this to occur with myself, your building principal, your child, so that we can really make sure that you feel comfortable in the answers that you're getting and have every opportunity from now until September 8th to, to feel good about the answers that you're receiving. So what I'd like to do tonight with the help of my team who have a tendency to remain quiet, but I'm going to try to get them to, to jump in, is to explain to you the difference in the model that you're seeing. So we have um, in our plan, a continuity of learning plan that extended to five different levels. And I'm certain that many of you, depending on your district, have seen the different levels from level one, as if nothing ever happened. Remember back in those days, I think that last time we had that was in February. Um, to level five, which is our facilities are closed, schools are closed, facilities are closed, buildings are closed, but teaching and learning is happening, but remotely, and we have no one in our facilities. So that's the continuum. We had to build plans for different levels and different variations of those of, of that continuum. And what we intend to start the new school year on is a level three plan. And our level three plan is a hybrid plan, which has on-site live learning combined with remote learning. And that's a little bit different from what you may be hearing from your home district plans, because the, um, the pathway of a CTE student, their schedule includes both CV Tech and their homeschool high school. So there's different variations in the remote side of the house and the live side of the house, depending on what model your homeschool is embracing. Some of our students will be um, participating live and in person 
at their home schools when they're not with us on our CV Tech campuses and other high school students will be participating at their home schools via remote learning. So that depends. Your home school schedules will depend on their individual plans. But what I'm here to share with you as far as if your student is um, on our schedule as a CV Tech student, your student will be on site and live instruction in our CTE programs for two days a week for full days. So if you're a parent of a returning student, you are familiar with our typical level one schedule, which is your student shows up at home school, comes to CV Tech for the morning, goes back to the home school for the afternoon, completes their school day, or they show up in the morning, they um, do their homeschool classes in the morning, and then they travel to CV Tech in the afternoon for the CV Tech session. And that the, either way, morning or afternoon, they have five half day sessions at CV Tech and five half day sessions at homeschool. In our level three model, all CTE students will be grouped by year of study. So the, what you see on the screen, and we are going to share that with you um, via our, our website, our Facebook page, and you're also going to be receiving this in your student welcome and congratulations packet that will be going out in the mail on Monday. So look for that, please. But all of this will be in there for you. But what will happen is the general rule of thumb is that if you are a first year student, a junior, brand new to CV Tech, you are going to be placed in the A cohort. If you are returning to CV Tech, coming to us for your second year, or um, not new to CV Tech, you've been with us before and you're finishing up your program, you are going to be placed in the B cohort. New Visions, I know we had a question. You guys have a, a whole, a little bit of a different nuance. So just hold the New Visions for right now. So generally, if you are an A, you will come to CV Tech on Mondays and Tuesdays live. You will start and arrive at nine, at nine in the morning and you will continue for a full day and be dismissed at 2.30. You will do that on Monday and Tuesday. You will then be scheduled by your home school, whether, however they are constructing your schedule, on Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. If you are a B cohort, you will follow your home school schedule that they've provided for you on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, and you will come to CV Tech for two full days on Thursday and Friday, starting at nine and ending at 2.30. So that's a big shift for us. And so there's a lot of details in there that, that we have to work out, but we are again, thrilled that we are going to have our CV Tech students back and live with us, participating with our extent, in our extensive labs, with our extensive equipment, with our industry expert, New York State certified teachers, ready to let you get your hands on, our, on the equipment and participate actively and engaged in our curriculum. So if you are a New Vision student, you have been placed in either an A cohort or a B cohort based on your home school. So you will need to check, you can check with us, we have the list, um, or with your home school as to whether or not you've been placed in the A or the B. And that's, that's how you will know when you come to CV Tech. If you're an A, you come Mondays and Tuesdays, if you're a B, you come Wednesday, or sorry, Thursday and Friday. So again, that is very different. On Wednesdays, we all will still be at CV Tech doing all that we need to do, but we will not have students on site. And that is very strategic. And that is put that way for a reason. Our labs and our, our facilities are large and extensive with a lot of equipment. We want to make sure that we have the time in between the two cohorts to make sure everything is clean and sanitized and ready for the next group. We also want to be able to provide any additional support that our students may need, additional perhaps one-on-one -on -one or small group, some opportunities. If your homeschool schedule, you need a little, we are going to work with your homeschool to, to provide that time. And so that's going to be our day to provide those extra supports and attention to our individual student needs and accommodations, but also to make sure the facilities are ready because students are our first priority and our staff and our teachers that everything is clean and sanitized and ready for the next group of kids. So this is the general format of how it's going to work. 
So if you all are familiar with coming half days, you're thinking to yourself, I know this already. What are we going to do about lunch? Because that's what every kid wants to know about when it comes to their high school um, program. So we will be um, having a lunch period for our students. We will actually be, we are um, moving into new territory, but uh, food is important. And <laughs> very the health and nutrition of our students is very important. So we will have breakfast and lunch available for all of our students when they are with us on campus. We right now are working with our food service manager and their team to um, map out the details and we will continue to provide you with those details. But I know that that was a question that came in advance and uh, we are working on it and we are prepared and ready to make sure that our students nutritional needs are taken care of as well as their social, emotional and academic needs while they're with us at CV Tech. Um, there were some other questions. I'm just going to pause just to see if there was anything in the chat at this time. Um, there is nothing. There's no new questions in the chat. OK, so this new arrangement is going to allow students to be on site and learning in in the element. Now, when we switch to remote, for those of you who were um, for for those of you who were um, with us last year and went through our remote uh, format, our teachers were spectacular about bringing the CTE experience to our students through the computer, whether it was live stream videos and interactive opportunities. We understand though, in a CTE model, the more opportunity that we can have students in the lab fit with our industry experts, engaging in the equipment that's trade specific or clinical specific will hopefully be the best way for them to really uh, become exemplary at the skills that we're teaching them. And so I need to share with you that our 23 CTE programs across our three campuses in Mineville, in Plattsburgh, on Satellite, and Maine, all of our programs are related to industry that are currently been allowed to reopen and re-engage with the community. And with that being said, comes with restrictions and new protocols and new industry standards for PPE, in new industry standards for social distancing, new industry standards for the onboarding of clients and sanitation of equipment and, and the shops. So in addition to the, the safety protocols that we are, we are uh, putting in place from the Department of Health and the State Education Department and the Governor's Office. We are also incorporating the PPE standards of the industry that are aligned to the programs of study that our students will be engaged in. So when we start talking about what are the requirements for the wearing of masks and so on and so forth, we have a standard for mask wearing, but we will also be utilizing the PPE requirements and industry standards for the industries represented on the CV Tech campuses. So we want to assure you that each of our industry expert New York State certified teachers not only are engaged in the Department of Health regulations and state ed requirements for reopening, but are actively engaged and have been since May of last year with their individual advisory committees to solicit the ever changing requirements of business and industry to reopen and reopen safely. And that we, we feel is essential in including in training students in career and technical education. So we also are including those protocols into our programs. Um, there was a question, will there be a charge for meals? Um, I believe that we are um, going to follow similar procedures that are happening in other districts but to be honest with you um i i am going to to ask for a little patience on that um and we will make sure that we get that answered um accurately but right now i do know that we are going to have it available and the details are coming i promise okay um also we had to make some decisions about how we do business and some of the opportunities 
we needed to shift. So many of our programs have what we call school based enterprises where our students are learning client based or work based learning activities that simulate the workforce or their certification area of which they're training. For instance, our cosmetology department has a clinic as they as they try as they earn their thousand hours for their department of licensing uh, certification. And we would bring in clients from the public so that those um, those skills could be tested. For the beginning of the school year, we will not be onboarding any off site or non employee client based activities just to be extra cautious to make sure that we have a handle on our student population and our staff population and the protocols that we have put in place to um, to monitor the flow of folks on and off of our campuses. Not saying that we won't do it. We're just not going to do it right in the beginning. And that was part that was part of the reason why we decided to delay the start of our on site preschool until we can uh, reevaluate at the at the beginning of the next semester. So we wanted to be mindful and respectful to our folks who needed to find an alternate source of a preschool and we didn't want to put them on a month to month wait and see let's see how it goes so we wanted first and foremost to uh, maintain um, the high standards of acting cautiously with um, limiting access to our facilities and not having little three and four year olds and parents and siblings on our site uh, right away as we're reboarding our our new students and our cv tech students so we decided to delay our preschool for the first semester. So I know there was a question that came in and that really was in an abundance of caution to, to really make sure that we can um, reboard our students and our faculty in as safe a process as possible. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at my questions. Anything in the chat? Okay. Yes, there's one question about a child whose district is on a six day cycle. You see that one? Yes. So what we did before we had this forum with you, we engaged with our school district superintendents on a couple different models that we, we thought we could do. Um, and, and we really tried to glean consensus. It's very difficult. We have very big districts. We have small districts. We have districts in Essex County. Clinton County. So when when we agreed on this double A, double B model, um, the school districts were aware that if the governor allowed us to have live instruction, this would be the model that CV Tech would open with. So our districts are aware. I will tell you that our districts have been very um, engaged in dialogue with us. Um, and we are working with them and they are working with us. So they are aware, but I encourage you to also seek some answers from the home district because our schedule is pretty set attending on Monday and Tuesday or attending on Thursday and Friday. How your district is working those other three days um, really needs to be a conversation with those individual districts. I, I hesitate. I'm giving you any examples because there, there is a lot of diversity in the way each district is handling their non CV tech days. Um, but I did, I do feel confident though, that after having those preliminary conversations with our school superintendents and then engaging all of your school superintendents, high school principals and guidance counselors, they are very aware and verse, well versed in the model that we are going to implement. And so we are working with them in, in making sure that your, your child has a seamless, um, but different seamless um, transition back to school. So I know that probably wasn't the answer you were looking for, but uh, Heather will need to, um, we'll need to check with your home school and how they're gonna do that. Okay. Um, will there be a mandatory check-in on our non, on our non, um, in person days, we will be available to your students and I'm not going to say absolutely yes or absolutely no. What we're actually waiting is we're waiting to really connect with your districts to see what they need 
um, to assist your student when when they are with with them at the host homeschool for the rest of their academic schedule. And then we're going to cash out how we're going to work the Wednesdays. But we're definitely going to be available. Um, but we have not made a determination as whether or not there's going to be a mandatory check in on those Wednesdays because we don't want to overburden your student if they have a full day of homeschool already scheduled. Now, what I will, will say, and I, I know we're going to get into the health and safety with Mr. Uh, with Mr. Sisson, um, but what I will say to you is tonight is just the beginning of the conversation. We are so excited to have your students back, but we know that each of you have a, a different um, a, a different question or a different need. And so please utilize us as resources to help you with this. Um, on, as I mentioned, on Monday, we will be sending out every student that was enrolled. And just so you know, all of our district students were enrolled by their homeschools at the end of May of last year. So as their schedules were being built, they have already been enrolled. So all of that has been sent to us. We have that in our student management system. So all of the students that were enrolled by their home district, and then those students who were accepted into our new visions programs will receive a welcome packet. You'll have this, the, um, the graphic that um, Super, Assistant Superintendent Gray shared on our screen. You'll have um, information. You'll have a little uh, a directory with all our faces on it and, and our phone numbers and how to connect with us. You will have all that paperwork that you always get even in a non-pandemic year that you have to fill out and send back to school. Um, but we wanted to give, it, give you everything so that you have it, you can digest it, and then you can call us and ask us questions about it and we can assist you with it. And if we don't have an immediate answer, I guarantee we will get it and get back to you. And that's why it was important tonight for you to see Dr. Stay, the principal of our Mindville campus, for you to see Mr. Facto, the principal of our um, main campus, and to see Mr. McCartney, the principal of our satellite campus, so you feel comfortable, hopefully enough, in reaching out and asking us those questions. Um, especially if you have, um, if you are or your child has um, some uh, medical concerns that you would like to run by us, um, pick up the phone and and make that um, make that connection so that we can talk it through with you. So at this point, um, unless there's something that I didn't say, um, I, I guess I will pass it over to Mr. Sisson to talk to you about our um, health and safety measures, even though I kind of gave some of it away, Jeff. I'm sorry. It's OK. 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 Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Jeff Sisson. I'm the Health Safety Risk Management Specialist for the BOCES. Um, so basically, I'm going to take 30 some odd pages and condense it into a few minutes. So don't worry, don't feel like you're overwhelmed because we're, you don't have to write all this down and take notes unless you'd like to, because we're going to have all kinds of information that comes to you about each one of these things. Um, in fact, that's one of the things that we're looking at now is how do we educate parents? How do we educate students as to all these safety measures that we're implementing? And there will be different opportunities. There'll be online trainings. There'll be opportunities to do things like we're doing now where we can have conversations electronically. Um, and I know uh, Mrs. Friedman mentioned that already. So, so don't worry about having to remember everything that I say. You have our safety plan online that you can look at. You'll be receiving this information through the school. Um, and, and again, you'll receive a um, training opportunities to go over these things specifically. Because um, we want you to be comfortable. We want you to feel comfortable and, and know what we're expecting. And this is really, uh, like Dr. Davey mentioned, this is a partnership. And it's a partnership in health. It's a partnership in education um, and you know it's a partnership in community. So we're going to take those three things and put them together. And so training is a big part of that, um, but the knowledge is also a big part of that going in before we even get the training and that's what we're doing tonight. I would like to say before we really get started that we have, we're calling it onboarding. We've onboarded our 12 month employees. We've done lots of training with them um, and 
I'd like to share just my thoughts on that um, because it was surprising to me that the process was actually easier than I anticipated. Before we started back up on July 20th, you know, there's lots of trepidation. There are feelings of unease and like, what's this going to look like? How are people going to react? Is it going to feel weird? Is it going to like, yeah, what, what's it going to be like? And actually, believe it or not, it was easier than I anticipated. Um, and, you know, honestly, I think it's that we are so used to doing a lot of these things that we're going to talk about now, just because we've been doing them for six months that we're actually pretty conditioned to, you know, wear masks around other people, to stay socially distant or physically distant from other people, to look for signs that might tell us things that we need to do in certain areas. So all these things, you know, it seemed to be to me less of a, it just didn't seem as big of a challenge when I actually got here as to what I anticipated it being. So I hope that your students find that to be true. I hope you find that to be true as a parent. And we're going to do our best to educate everybody as to what we need and make this as easy as possible and as safe as possible. Um, okay, and again, feel free to write any questions in the, in the chat that I don't cover. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the daily health screening. Um, and, you know, this is something that we as a business have to do. Uh, we have required by the New York State Department of Health to do this every day for each one of our employees. And we're going to extend this daily health screening to our students as well. Um, I'm sure you all are pretty familiar with the four questions, right? So basically, are you healthy and well today? Um, you know, um, have you been diagnosed with COVID-19? Um, you know, do you go right down? The third one is in the last 14 days, um, I have not been in close contact with somebody who was diagnosed with COVID-19. And then the last one is if you've been traveled internationally or been out of state to a state with a, with a high level of community transport, right? So, so you're looking at those things and we're screening people. We're asking parents just like we ask our employees and we're asking the adult students just like we ask our employees um, to answer these questions every day. And that involves taking a temperature. So we ask our employees and our students and parents, if they're, if they're not adults yet, to take your student's temperature every day prior to school as a part of answering and attesting to these four questions you will have. Um, okay, so that is the daily screening. Um, we are also going to have, we're required by law to do, or by mandate to do um, random screening. So not only will you attest that you can answer yes to the four questions, but we are also required to do random screenings throughout the day. Um, so we will be doing that to maintain compliance with the guidelines. Um, any questions on daily health screening real quick? I don't see anything in the chat. I'll give you four seconds to type quickly. All right, masks and face coverings. And again, this is something that we're so used to now, um, but we'll be doing trainings for the students, just like we've already done trainings for our 12 month employees and we'll soon do the 10 month employees. But again, it goes over um, the fact that we're going to be using wearing masks um, the entire time we're in our buildings, except for you have um, when you're eating, obviously you can't wear a mask, right? Um, when we're having mask breaks and we're going to build in mask breaks or face covering breaks, if you will, uh, for the students and the staff throughout the day, um, because it is difficult to wear a mask. Um, the entirety of the school day or work day. Um, we're doing it here, so I understand how, how difficult that is. Um, and social and physical distancing, you know, this is really, um, and again, I think it's something that we're just so used to doing now that I think it's going to come easier than you expect. Um, but we're going to do things like we have markings on the floor. Um, if you're going to talk to a teacher, there's going to be a mark by their desk. So you know how close you can stand different places like that. I mean, if you are in a shared space or like the, the office, there'll be the markings on the floor. So you know where the six foot is six feet away. So you can be safe. We have barriers on those um, on the office desks to just to give an extra level of protection to the person sitting there and then the person they might be talking to. Um, we are going to work to train the students and staff to when they walk down a hallway to walk with their right shoulder near the wall 
So that way everybody has that six feet of distance as they're walking to and from um, different locations in the building. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything on that more that I guess not. I mean, it's just the same things that we're used to doing now. It's been such a part of our life for a long time. Um, and, you know, in good hygiene practices, start with hand washing um, and using hand sanitizer when hand washing isn't an option. Um, we're going to have plenty of soap around, plenty of paper towels for drying our hands and encouraging people to do that as much as possible. Um, obviously, before eating, um, after using the restroom, and there is signage. And, and one of the things that um, Assistant Superintendent uh, Gray mentioned was communication. And we are going to be using and utilizing signs to do a lot of that throughout the day. So people are going to be asked to be cognizant of the signs. I know, you know, typically, like in a non COVID world, we may not pay attention to signs on the walls much. They just aren't, right? You just don't even notice them. But now we're going to ask people to pay attention to those things because they are important and they're going to remind people to do things that are for their own health and the health of everybody in the school community. Um, and so some of those might be the hand washing signs in the bathroom. Some of those might be reminding people to use a hand sanitizer after using some type of shared equipment. Um, and that could be an equipment in the CV Tech um, um, classroom, or it could be you know, something if you have to go down and staple something at the teacher's desk or something like that. So all those things, the signs will be there reminding people to do that. Um, you know, also good health and hygiene. You have respiratory hygiene. So we're going to reinforce all those good respiratory hygiene rules about sneezing into your shoulder or elbow or sneezing into a tissue and then you throwing that tissue away um, and then washing your hands. So all those basic hygiene rules are so very important. They're all simple, the things that we know, but they're something that we're gonna be reinforcing. And we're actually going to see if our students will help us reinforce those things by making videos um, with CV Tech students in them um, to help educate the other students on remembering to do these things and being cognizant about doing that. Um, we are, um, by law, we're just working hand in hand with the New York State Department of Health at a state level, also our local um, Clinton County Health Department and mm -hmm. Essex County Department of Health on, um, mm -hmm. on all of this, but including looking at suspect cases, um, confirmed cases, helping them do contract contact tracing. Um, we are not actually going to be doing contact tracing, but we would assist them if they asked us to do so. Um, and so we'll be involved in that. We have two people in our organization um, that will be doing that um, for them or with them. And, you know, a lot of people are concerned about the emergency response protocols and drills. How are you going to do fire drills in, in a situation like this? How can you possibly keep the kids six feet apart? And um, so, I mean, you just, you know, we're being creative as everybody else in the state is. But just an example for a fire drill, um, one of the options is you have doors on each side of the hallway. The students that come out of one side, or the left side, would stay on that wall again with their left with their right side against the. Is that right? No. Yes. No. Their left side in that case would be against that wall, but the other side students would come out. They'd stick to that wall, so they'd be walking in the same direction to the exit door. They might come in contact within six feet as they go mm -hmm. out of the door. It's such a brief thing. They'll be wearing masks. Um, so I mean, so you try to find creative ways to maintain the social and physical distancing. Um, to use all these other things we have with a mask use and to, to keep people safe while still maintaining um, the requirements to perform these drills and um, to involve students in the drills. So we will be doing things like that. Um, and again, um, you know, it's a partnership. And like Michelle had said, or uh, Ms. Freeman said earlier, sorry, Michelle, uh, that, you know, this is the beginning of the plan. And the, and the guidance is changing so much. It's like every day there's a little tweak, a little here and a little tweak there. So, I mean, this is this is a living, I mean, literally, it's a living, breathing thing that's changing constantly. Um, so this document, the document you're going to see online is probably not the same document you're going to see on September 8th, um, but it's going to continue to get better um, and it's going to continue to change as the guidance changes. Um, so, um, any questions on any of those things? Uh, 
I didn't see any on health and safety yet. I just see some transportation, but we can get to those after with the other. Okay, we did we did get a couple um, earlier, and one of them is: Can students wear a plastic face shield instead of a mask? Um, that we would not be doing that unless there's a reason to do that, like a medical reason. Um, you know, because truly the mask is the best thing that we can do uh, to to, to um, protect the people around you from whatever that individual might have. It also provides a little bit of protection from what's in the air. The face shield would really, if it's here, it might catch sneezes and coughs, but the normal respiration, that's going to make its way out. So that's really not ideal, but there might be cases where there are medical reasons why we have to do that, but that will be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. And you can contact um, um, Director Friedman for more information on that. Um, mm -hmm. There is, and I don't know how deep we want to get into it. There, there's a question about what happens if my child's sick? Will they still need to get a COVID test? Um, there, we are following the CDC guidelines for that, for return to school. Um, that is posted on the CDC site. You can read it, but in a nutshell, if a student has symptoms and they're sent home, um, if they go to their, their physician and they see their physician and the physician says that whatever their, their symptom was is related to another type of illness or another a pre existing condition or something like that, then they would be allowed back to school. And this is simplified, so don't take it literally. But if the person is either diagnosed with COVID-19 um, by a test or never went to get a test, but had symptoms of COVID-19, they would be out 10 days from the day that they first exhibited symptoms. And it would have to be three days after the, their fever broke or three days after the last symptom that they had. So technically it's 10 days automatically um, or three days after. So, I mean, it could be 10 days and at the end of the 10 days, you still had a fever. So then you might have to wait three more days after that. I mean, you might have to wait for your fever to go away for two days and then three days after that. So it's a minimum of 10 days, but again, that's on the CDC site. If you have more questions about that, um, you can reach out to, I guess you can reach out to my email if you'd like, that's fine. And it's, I can, I can give you that. You are gonna have to take notes now though. Um, it's Sisson, S-I-S-S-O-N underscore Jeff, J-E-F-F, at cves.org. And you can find it on the health and safety portion of our website as well. I know it's there somewhere. It's there. Um, they've also asked me to cover um, facilities, so I'm going to quickly jump into that. So cleaning and disinfecting protocols, again, a lot of that's driven by the CDC. Um, you know, there are guidelines for mm -hmm. how we're going to do things. We're doing some interesting things where we're actually providing um, teachers um, green chemicals, so chemicals that are um, ecologically friendly. Um, they are not something that would cause harm to the individual using it. They wouldn't require PPE. So we're providing those to the teachers to clean as much as they would like. Um, and um, then our, our O&M staff is going to come in and do a lot of the disinfecting and things like that, because we don't want our students to be anywhere around the disinfectants, anything that would need them to be um, gowned up and wear any kind of a PPE or protective equipment. Um, so that's our plan for that. Um, we are looking mm -hmm. at cleaners that do not leave residues, which is fantastic, and that's what we currently have. Um, and we're excited about that. And we are bumping up ventilation as well. So we're going to put in as much fresh air. So there are dampers on the back of different um, heating units, um, whether they're on the roof or, or like um, by a window. And we're going to open up those dampers as much as we can and let as much fresh air as possible, weather permitting, obviously, in as we can. Mm -hmm. We're also, um, we've uh, increased the, the, uh, the filters that we have to mm -hmm. a much more restrictive filter. Um, but we're, we're somewhat, we've done the best we can. Some of these things um, are just, they're, they're, they're not made for these units. So a lot of the really, really heavy duty ones just will not work in schools. So we've got the best one that we can. It's the highest level that's possible to use in the equipment that we have and we're installing those. So that's great news. So as much fresh air as possible, upgraded filters, 
Um, so good stuff. Lots of signage, like I mentioned, throughout our buildings to remind everybody. Visitor access is limited. We have a procedure that our 12 monthers have been trained on. Um, we're not allowing people, visitors inside of our building unless it's absolutely necessary. So if you're going to be dropping something off at the school, it's very possible that you would be dropping it off either outside or somebody will be meeting you outside um, to grab that. So bear with us with that. We're not trying to be rude, but but again, we're trying to protect your students and protect our staff and our faculty as much as possible. Any questions on any of the facilities information? Okay, so it looks like I passed the baton to, <laughs> I don't know. Back to me. Back to you. Well, so I do want to extend on something that Mr. Sisson said. Um, the facilities cleaning, sanitation, and and whatnot is different from what will happen um, in our CTE areas when our students are um, in the uh, simulated work uh, environment. So when I mentioned before that we are also onboarding our industry standards. The industry standards right now, if you're working in an automotive tech shop, that you have to, you know, make sure your tools are wiped down when you're finished with a job and those types of things. And our students will be responsible for those types of activities as they would be in the industry um, paralleled workplace. And we did get clarification from state ed on that because the guidance that state ed put out said that students are not by, by allowed to be part of the sanitation and disinfecting of the school this of the school facilities, which means we can't, you know, put them on our O and M crew and have them go through and and do that. Um, but they did clarify for us that if it is part of the CTE curriculum for sanitation, if you're in, if you are in a restaurant, there is a lot of sanitation that has to be done in a restaurant, and so those skills and those competencies will still be incorporated in the classroom. So I just want to make give you some clarification on that um, in case there may be some miscommunication about uh, what is acceptable for students to do and what, what is not. Um, there was also some information that um, came our way regarding the uh, breakfast and lunch. We were awarded um, the community eligibility grant, which means that CV Tech students will be able to receive breakfast and lunch at no cost. So that is awesome news. Um, and we are working with our food service director to work out all those details. So thank you for your patience on waiting for that answer. Um, there was also a couple questions about busing and there was a question about the early childhood program. So I know we talked about the preschool before. The early childhood program is a two year program of study um, that is aligned to prepare students to either go on into uh, uh, higher degrees of education or work in as a licensed preschool provider provider and, and related fields. So the, the fact that we have an on-site preschool is such a, a fabulous opportunity, but it is not the only opportunity that our students have to apply those educational-based developmental uh, strategies and lessons uh, during their two years of study. So although we won't onboard our preschoolers, which incidentally, our preschool doesn't usually open until mid to late October. Um, so we will be supplementing their, their um, work-based learning experiences um, with other activities that will align to their curriculum. So um, I know that, that it's a bummer for all of us, um, but it's not going to by any means dismantle or um, uh, diminish the program. As far as transportation goes, again, your school districts have a little bit of a twist on what's happening on days that they're not at CV Tech, but ultimately your district is responsible for providing transportation to and from CV Tech. Now that may mean that they pick you right up from home and bring you right to CV Tech, or it means that they pick you up, bring you to school, and then you go to CV Tech, or you have to get to school and then they bring you to CV Tech. That is going to have to be worked out with your district as to what their plan is. We had some transportation supervisors calling us today, so they're working on it. They're trying to make it work. There's all these nuances for everyone. What we are doing 
is we are expanding the opportunity for students to obtain permission to drive themselves. However, it is a process and it's not a, a given. So um, we have applications for students to get permission to drive, um, but it has to be vetted and approved by the home districts and then by the building principal in which they're, they're training. Um, and typically it's only for, for students who work afterwards or have a conflict. You know, we really want them to be on, on the, the district provided busing. However, in this particular case, we realize that it may be um, more beneficial health and safety wise and just logistic wise if students were allowed to transport themselves. So um, you will have to obtain that permission form from us and have it approved by the home district before anybody drives to CV Tech. They, they shouldn't be driving with the form. Um, so that's why it's really great that we perhaps can have some conversations in advance of the first day of school and help work out all those details for you and with you. And I'm checking off my list. I think, I think those are all the questions. I do believe so. I believe that's all the questions that we have. I was wondering, is there any other topic to cover? I had attendance, and but you already mentioned attendance in your teaching and learning part. That attendance yeah. will be taken, and yeah, attendance. Um, we expect, yeah, we expect whatever cohort they have been assigned. We expect them to be live and on site on those days. That is the expectation to complete the program of study for CV Tech under this level three hybrid model, which we anticipate we're gonna start with. Did I mention how excited we are that they're coming back to us? <laughs> yes, you did. That's okay. exciting. Just in case I left that part out, we can't wait. We did put in the Q&A. We only had one question in the Q&A, just so people know you can chat with us, but you can't see our chat, I believe, the attendees. So the Q&A is public to everybody. So if you do have a question, definitely feel free to post in the Q&A and then we can write a response to that. But I did respond and I apologize to the only question we had. So I did put the link to our plan in there, but also if you just go to our cves.org website, you can get our plan. And then also I put Mr. Sisson's email address in there. So that is available too if people have um, specific questions around health and safety, because he's definitely our expert on that. Anything else? Um, I don't see any new questions. Does anybody else have new questions? And also in the chat, I guess you can privately message one of the panelists individually, because you may know that person or have some form of relationship. So, and they can answer that question as well. If there's something, or some of them may have privately messaged them back already. So we've been monitoring that for everyone. Ms. Calabrese Gray, it's Mark Davey. I'd just like to jump in for a minute and follow up on Mrs. Friedman's comment. I'd just like to acknowledge that our, our food service program, our lunches and breakfasts uh, have, have transitioned and been outstanding. And, and Dr. Stay uh, was aware of that and saw a big change and then we moved to the same program in Plattsburgh. Um, our food service director works very closely with local providers. There's a strong farm to market program, the food is healthy and delicious. So I want to acknowledge that the, that the food has been amazing and, and we're really looking forward as CVES as a whole to providing those meals to all of our students. And there will be no charge for any student regardless of which district you, you come from. So we want to just acknowledge that that is a no charge meal for breakfast and lunch. So thank you for the great question. So please, in the next uh, in the next few days, look for a large vanilla envelope that is coming to you. Um, if you're not sure that you're actually on the enrollment and or you want to double check, please contact our office. We'll run you through everything we have. We um, invite you as soon as possible. If you haven't, if you're not a return, if you are a new to us, CB Tech family to uh, enroll yourself in our parent portal so that you will be able to update your contact information. Um, but we really are excited about 
having those conversations with you and your students. And we'll take our portable devices and we'll take you on a tour. We'll show you your classrooms, even though we're under construction, um, just to make sure that the transition is as seamless and as uh, low anxiety as any new year could be, not just for your student, but for yourself as well as their parents and loved ones. Um, we take it very seriously and it, it truly is an honor, an honor and a privilege to have your children under our care. And it is certainly something that none of us take for granted or lightly. Um, and, and, and I'm grateful that we all had a chance to show our faces to, to tell you that. Um, and if you have other friends or community members that were not able to be on with us tonight, but their child is going to be with us, have them call us. We'll do this meeting a hundred times with a hundred different people if that's what it takes. I don't know. I saw some looks around. I will do it. Um, but it is really important that the, you you hear it from us and we can help you work through it. So let them know, no, you didn't miss it. You just missed our first one. Give us a call. If we have to schedule another one or another two, we will, or we'll just do it one-on-one -on -one, um, because we really want people to feel comfortable with, with sending folks to CB Tech. And just as a reminder, we are recording this. So this recording will be available. So let other parents and you know know about this, let other students know about this because the more they hear it, the better, because the thing is they can ask questions and that just actually improves our plan, right? So we're gonna be more prepared than ever. So when students walk through that door on September 8th, right? We're gonna be very excited, clapping our hands and cheering and playing culture club, right, Mr. Facto? Of course we will. Of course yeah. we will. Yeah. We'll have and to did... have pre-recorded horn sounds because blowing horns is probably not an acceptable CDC practice at this point. But we will, um, we'll, we will, we will uh, record the sounds of horns blowing. And we do have a late question, which was about the parent drop off and pick up. So I know that you are working, and I'm not sure which location this is. So I, I think it would. I'm not sure the, if it's satellite, if it's Maine, or if it's a Mineville campus. So, but I know you are going to have information out about yeah. that, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. The general rule of thumb is that students will start, their classes will start at 9 a.m. and they will be dismissed at 2.30. We will uh, get you that information and logistics for each campus and loading zones and, and all of that as well. Yeah, but absolutely you can drop your child off and pick them up. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, well, and also for those who uh, wanna join us next week, Monday night at six o'clock, we are going to be hosting a forum for special education. And then on Tuesday, it's really a general session, so it's anyone. So anyone who wants to join us is more than welcome to join us on Tuesday at six o'clock. Any other announcements? Are we good? Okay, so thanks. Thank you, everybody. I don't know, Dr. Davy, do you have any parting words? So uh, We're just so thankful for our CV Tech staff and administrators and team to come together to provide this opportunity to answer questions, to make a recording that's available to all of our students uh, and parents and guardians so that we can answer questions. We truly are excited about our students returning. Uh, that's the business we're in, and we understand that nothing can replace uh, a real teacher in a classroom. However, health and safety is our first priority, and we understand these are extraordinary times, and we're taking extraordinary steps to provide that safety and an excellent learning environment. So I thank everyone for participating and we're, we're so appreciative and, and please uh, reach out with other questions and know that we're all part of the CV Tech and CVES family and that, that we're proud to move forward working together with you in partnership in the coming year. So thank you all and good night.